Welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. This is for the week of April 8th to the 14th. There is a lot going on in this market. I'm going to break it all down for you. Everything from the luxury market to the Manhattan market and the Brooklyn market. I'll wrap it all up. I'm going to give you my recommendations for active buyers and sellers. If you are an active buyer or seller, you're definitely going to want to stick around for that. So what happened in the luxury market? Well, there were 18 contracts signed for properties that were priced at 4 million and above. That is eight fewer than the previous week. Two of those properties were in the trophy category, meaning they were priced at 10 million and above. 14 of those were condos, two were co-ops, and two were townhouses. 12 were uptown and six were downtown. The number one contract signed for last week was on the Upper West Side. It was at 1965 Broadway. It was Penthouse 3 BC. It was asking almost 16 million. It has been on and off the market since May of 2022. It started as high as almost 20 million. It is a triplex penthouse condo. It has almost 6,900 square feet. It includes six bedrooms, six and a half bathrooms, and two terraces that total over 2,000 square feet. One of the terraces is actually outfitted with a kitchen, which is a nice little amenity to have in an outdoor space. This unit also features a 49-foot great room with city and Hudson River views. The building has concierge and doormen. The number two contract for last week for the luxury market was apartment 11D at 10 Madison Square West. It was asking 12.5 million. It sold immediately after listing only two weeks ago. This is a corner condo. It has 3,309 square feet. Includes Four bedrooms and four and a half baths. It features a 37 by 23 foot great room, an open kitchen and master bedroom overlooking Madison Square Park. The amenities in this building include a concierge, doorman, fitness center, 60 foot lap pool, hot tub, yoga, Pilates studios, a children's playroom, garden courtyard and bike storage. The stats for last week, the total weekly asking price sales volume 133,292,500. Average asking price, 7,405,139. Median asking price, 6,995,000. Average discount from original ask to last asking price, 8%. Average days on the market, 803. That is it for the luxury market. We did see a bit of a pullback from last couple of weeks in the luxury market with eight fewer contracts being signed. Again, not really a trend. That's only a week. And overall, we've been seeing a good performance in the luxury market. We're going to move on now, take a look at what happened in Manhattan. For the week in Manhattan, for the supply, 462, that is down a little over 18%. Contract signed, also down about 3.5%, 218 off market, also down about 24.5% at 123. The monthly look at supply shows about almost 1,900 properties. It's up about 8%. Contract signed, 1,010, up almost 10%. Off market, up almost 24%, 528. We look at the market pulse, we see we continue to be in this balanced neutral market. And the liquidity pace chart, if we take a look at this 30-day moving window of contract activity, 1,010 properties over this last 30 days, shows us that we are balanced, neutral, liquidity, not really anything to write home about. We've been kind of moving sideways with contract activity. If we look at the median last asking price for resale condos in Manhattan, shows that the early 2024 rebound may be fading. So I'll get into that more at the end of this report, but we could possibly be running out of steam a little bit in this spring market. Again, hard to say 100%, but the data that's coming in is suggesting that the kind of early days of what we were seeing beginning of this year, it seems to be slowing down. But as I said, I'll get into that more at the end of this report. So be sure you stick around for that. 
We're going to move on now and take a look at what happened in Brooklyn. As always, any questions, please post them below or reach out to me directly at Sotheby's. The weekly supply in Brooklyn is down almost 13%, 249 properties came on the market last week, 129 contracts were signed, that is also down a little over 5%, and off-market properties, 55, also fell 36%. The one-month view shows us that the supply is about 954. That's up for the month in Brooklyn, a little over 10%. Contract signed also up, but not by a lot, 5%, 587. Off market also rose 235, a little over 11%. The market pulse in Brooklyn is also showing that we continue to be in this balanced, relatively neutral place. And the liquidity pace chart, this 30-day moving window of contract activity, 587, up a bit from last month, 6.5%, but down by the same percentage from last year. Again, holding steady in this kind of going sideways, relatively lackluster way. If we look at the Brooklyn data, this look at the median last asking price for resale condos in Brooklyn shows, again, just as with Manhattan, that the early 2024 rebound may also be fading. And again, as with Manhattan, we may also be running a bit out of steam. Okay, that is it for Brooklyn. I'm going to move on now. I'm going to wrap this up, give you my thoughts, kind of sum up where we seem to be at this moment in time in this market in New York City. So stick around for that. As always, any questions, please post them below or reach out to me directly at Sotheby's. So in the luxury market, we saw 18 contracts signed at 4 million and above, two of those being in the trophy category property. That is a bit of a pullback, eight fewer than the previous week, as is often Almost always the case, condos led the way, 14 condos to two co-ops to two townhouses, 12 were uptown, six were downtown. As I continue to mention, good percentage, 60 to 70% of those deals in the luxury market are all cash. So those folks don't seem to really be too concerned with the interest rates, unlike other parts of the market. If we look at the conditions in Manhattan and Brooklyn market-wide, we see that both Manhattan and Brooklyn continue to be in this balanced and neutral market. We saw the supply in Manhattan over the week fall about 18%, 462. Although we have crossed the 5,000 mark for inventory, we are basically on trend for inventory in Manhattan for this time of year. In Brooklyn, we dropped about 13% for the week. 249 properties came on the market. We are seeing a bit of a slowdown in Brooklyn. Contracts signed. In Manhattan, we saw kind of a slowdown. Not a lot, 3.5%. 218 contracts signed. As I said, we're kind of moving sideways. We're a little over 3,000 contracts signed year to date. Brooklyn, we're down about 5%, 129. As with Manhattan, we seem to be kind of moving sideways. So from a price action standpoint, both Brooklyn and Manhattan, if you would call the chart that I shared with you for both Brooklyn and Manhattan, this data is showing that the early 2024 price rebound may be fading. And it looks like we peaked in February. March shows signs of the start of a decline. So what does all that mean? If you are an active seller, what this could mean for you is that these may be the best conditions that you will have for this spring market. And you should use this time wisely. Do not assume that we're going to continue to see a very robust spring market. We could be surprised and we could suddenly have a big rebound, but Given what the data is showing and what it showed in March, you know, February, very frothy, lots of activity, contract activity, looked like we were going to be really having a very fruitful spring market. Then we saw a pullback in March. What is that going to mean for April? We really don't know. 
And then what is that going to mean for May? Again, we just don't know. So if you are a serious seller, you want to get your deal done, I would advise that uh, you not really wait around, pay attention to what the data is coming in at and assume that, you know, this could be it if you want to be, let's say, conservative. We are seeing a slow kind of inventory rise, again, on trend for Manhattan, not so much in Brooklyn. The contract activity in both Manhattan and Brooklyn seems to be kind of going sideways. So again, if you're an active seller, do try to use this time wisely. If you're a buyer, we're in a neutral, balanced market. Overall, the price action is relatively stable after what we experienced at the end of 2023. Just as I said for the sellers, the inventory is slowly rising, certainly in Manhattan, Brooklyn, less so, contract activity kind of going sideways. You may be seeing more competition, less negotiability, it will really depend on the property, when it came on the market, how well they are priced for the market, what the price point is. Each case is very unique. And I'm sure if you are an active buyer and you have been looking for a while, I don't have to tell you that. What I can say is if you are a serious buyer, be sure that you have your ducks in a row. If you are borrowing, make sure you have your pre-approval, make sure you have your ducks in a row so you're ready to make those offers and that you really know what the comps are for the things that you are shopping. Okay, that is it for this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. Any questions, please reach out to me directly or post them below. As always, my thanks to the Olshan Luxury Report and to Urban Digs. The work they do helps me to help you to make great decisions. I'll be back next week with the very latest news about what's happening in the New York City real estate market. In the meantime, take care.